man, did I have a blast at the American Atheist Convention in Philadelphia. I got to meet some wonderful folks doing amazing work within the movement. I ate some excellent food. Thank you, Reddington Market. But if I'm being honest, the thing I was most excited by at AACON this year was the table and the panel for the Creators Accountability Network. See, when folks had the idea for CAN, we assumed it would be a kind of anonymous hotline right, where members of our community could report inappropriate behavior without having to worry about legal or personal consequences, where victims of harassment or assault or bias could talk to trained professionals rather than having to rely on a whisper network. And that would have been great, right? And Ken is going to do that. But they're also offering something that I never dreamed was possible and something that I think won't just change our community, but might make the entire internet better. So there's this truism in professional magic that says, if you want to make a living doing magic, you don't need to be famous, you just need to be the guy for about 100 people. And the point of this truism is that like being on America's Got Talent and getting on TV, local news, those things are great, but they're not going to pay your bills. Being the first name people think of when they need magic for, you know, give or take 100 people, That keeps you working for life. And on the internet, we call that micro-creation. And that's what we are here on this show. And don't get me wrong. I'm awed that we have as many listeners as we do. And I'm lucky enough to make a living doing what I do. But in the grand scheme of, you know, TV shows and YouTube and podcasting megastars, we are very, very small fish in an ocean of content. But there's a problem with micro-creation like ours. See, when you start your podcast or your YouTube channel, it's vital you engage with your audience, right? Audiences help you learn. They help you grow. They help you be better, right? And our audience has helped us do all that stuff immensely. But then when you reach a certain size, that audience becomes too big to get good feedback from. And then you add the problems of the social internet to that, And all of the sudden, sometimes overnight, one of your most useful resources as an artist very quickly can become your downfall. So I don't want to call anybody out, so I'll give you a silly example, but it is true. My buddy used to work in production for The Sopranos on HBO, and he once told me that The Sopranos used to get something like 100 emails every time someone ate meat on the show, right? Vegans, vegetarians, animal rights folks would write in and say, hey, I don't like that your show had dead animals on it, right? And look, obviously, most vegans and vegetarians weren't writing in to complain, but if one in a million people are complaining and you've got an audience the size of The Sopranos, those numbers add up. And I want to be clear, I sympathize with the people sending those emails, right? I wouldn't do it myself, but I find animal cruelty reprehensible, and it is easier and kinder to show a character taking a bite of salad than cutting into a steak, right? There is a real and valid conversation to be had about that topic. But you know who doesn't need to get those emails? James Gandolfini. The problem is, when you're a micro-creator, you are both James Gandolfini and the guy getting those emails. And they don't make you better, right? They make you fucking crazy. Right? You can't pull up to your laptop and argue with people about the validity of eating meat on camera all day because, one, they're not going to listen, but it's also just going to piss them off and further alienate them from your content. You can't acquiesce to every request and complaint you get because then your content becomes unrecognizable, compromise-filled garbage. All you can do if you want to stay sane is ignore it, which is bad for you and it's bad for the people who like your stuff, who want to be heard. It's bad for everybody. And this... This is where Can comes in in a way that I never expected. Because not only will Can handle inappropriate behavior for those it certifies, but it will also improve the conversation about content as well, right? When we mess up, you'll have someone to talk about it with. Whether or not the complaints are valid, there will be a trained professional who will assess whether or not the content violates their code of conduct and will pass that information on to creators. The result? Creators get better, and people with issues get hurt. And look, I'm not fooling myself. I know there are still going to be bad actors, right? I got a few emails this week from folks who wanted apologies for my misrepresentation of Gamergate over on Citation Needed. And those guys are going to be as interested in making a complaint to Can as I'm sure Can is at hearing them out. But 
there are folks sometimes who are hurting, who want our community to do better and be better, who will now have a way to do it. You are the wheat that deserves to be separated from the chaff, the babies in our bathwater. But you can do us one better because Ken is still in its very, very early stages and they are still looking for volunteers for those jobs, volunteers who know our community and want to make it better. So if that's you, hit them up at creatoraccountabilitynetwork.org. And I look forward to hearing from you.